Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I super appreciate it. Well, the season is not even close to being done. I have other things to work on as well as actually finishing this marathon and finishing my Zelda marathon before we can even get to the season seven. And luckily for me, making this video right now, it's in the middle of March, so I should be able to get these things done super quick. However, we're gonna be looking at a game this week I never actually thought I'd be looking at. It's Final Fantasy. No, not Final Fantasy 2 or 3 or Final Fantasy 9. We're looking at the first game in the series. And I remember I tried this game back in 2013 during my RPG binge, but I remember it being meh. And then I bought the Final Fantasy Origins for the PlayStation 1, and that was also meh. So I decided when I got the Pixel Remasters to give this game another try. And I fell in love with this game. I really think Final Fantasy 1 is a really fun game. But I wanted to preface something before I started the videos. I love Final Fantasy. I didn't really talk about this in my Final Fantasy 4 video, but Final Fantasy is my freaking jam. Well, I think it's funny because my wife, when she was putting away the discs and my little disc holder thing, she said how sickening it was how much Final Fantasy was in there. I mean, I have a ton of PlayStation games, but I think it's half my library, just the Final Fantasy discs I have in there alone. And it's funny, as I bought basically one through nine in a span of a year. But y'all might say that I'm a little obsessed with Final Fantasy, and I may be, but man, depending upon these Pixel Remaster playthroughs that I'm doing right now, this could be my second favorite series, if not my favorite RPG series of all time. But I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Let's look at Final Fantasy. Well, looking into researching for this game and looking at Square as a whole for their company, they just started out as a section of a company and not just their own gaming company, until 1986 when things changed. After putting out a dungeon crawler type RPG and Rad Racer of all things, which were good but not exactly hit games, the series creator Hinobu Sakaguchi wanted to give the RPG thing another try. As for something I found interesting, the man didn't want to be a game creator at all. In fact, he wanted to be a musician, which is kind of cool, but I don't think you could make a sustainable living as just being a musician. I mean, look at the poor souls that go on America's Got Talent every year. Anyway, they felt as a company and Sakaguchi thought to create a last game, a final game basically to end all games, which is what people say the game is named after with it being Final Fantasy, but according to my favorite reviewer of all time, some call me Johnny, is that he just wanted to make the game title go with FF, so Final Fantasy was the name. I wouldn't make a joke about this, but I feel like it would be copying his video, so you should just go watch the video yourself. One thing to know, he curses like a pool player. If you get offended by that, or if your mom, or your husband, or your wife, or your girlfriend, or your boyfriend get pissed off at you for watching the video, don't come cry to me. I warned you. Anyway, with the success of the first Dragon Quest game known as Dragon Warrior in the US, they decided to go with another RPG. And they wanted to make it similar, but less difficult. With the success of it in Japan, the game would receive two sequels after that. But before the game was even able to reach it in the US in 1990, the third game was released in Japan. Which, I will get to that in the Final Fantasy II review. But anyway, the game would come out on the NES and became a big hit in Japan and America. And created one of the biggest sagas in RPG history. I mean, that's the understatement of the years. Final Fantasy went on to become one of the more successful franchises in RPG history. And having one of the most super influential games of Final Fantasy VII which really influenced how RPGs look and are made today. And honestly, we have to thank the success of the first game in order for these games to actually have seen the light of day. And RPGs might have been boring for the most part, but anyway, let's get back to the review. Well, Final Fantasy's plot is as simple as can be. The sea's waters are raging, the winds are dying, and the world is just seeming to be weird in somewhat dark place. Four heroes would at long last appear, but it seems like they're looking mostly for their local subway. They reach the kingdom of Cornelia, where the king sees the four and tells of a prophecy where the four heroes are to awaken the four crystals and restore peace. But he first says, yo, do my bidding, and makes the heroes go save his daughter Sarah. And this won't be the first time you'll be needing to help someone out. Final Fantasy's narrative is both to save the world and save the inhabitants. This isn't too much of a nuisance, but when Nancy is like, go do this, and I'm like, I don't want it, they say, too bad, you need to get this item to move on and save the world. 
To which I say, fine, whatevs, bro, I guess I'll do it. Let me, anyway, let me get back to the plot. We see our hero saving Sarah from the evil Garland, who just kidnaps her to kidnap her. And this isn't much of a stretch. I've seen stories in real life where people literally look at someone and say, yep, I'm gonna wreck your whole life up and kidnap you. Anyways, the heroes take care of Garland and goes back to the kingdom where these workers fix the bridge where the four heroes head off to their adventure. After an encounter with these pirates, the team gets a ship and heads off to Elfham where they go to the Marsh Cave, going all the way down to get an item that will later help them take care of an elf that's in the Western Keep. The team heads to the Western Keep to take on said elf, and they help the king feel better. The gang head off to Melmond. From here, they go to the Cavern of Earth to awaken the first crystal. The team then heads off to a town on Crescent Lake, and they go to their next dungeon and crystal. They locate the fire crystal, and after that, it is awakened. The team heads to the sunken shrine and take down the kraken and awaken the third crystal. The team is now set on going to the desert. They head to the Mirage Tower and awaken the wind crystal. The team heads back to Cornelia, and they have to go back to the Chaos Shrine where they found Garland at the beginning of the game, where they go back 2,000 years and take on Garland again, which I'm not gonna lie is pretty much the lamest plot twist of all freaking time. So wait, Garland, you're telling me you just wanted to wreck havoc to wreck havoc and put us through crap just because? Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah. The team defeats him known as Chaos. Yeah, real original there, buddy. The world is saved and the credits roll. Not really a ton to this plot. I mean, yes, it was on the NES. Yes, it was Square's last attempt at a game. But man, the simplicity is a little too simplistic at times. Sometimes the plot really has nothing to do with anything. Like again, you tell peeps like, I don't want to do something, they basically say, too bad, buddy. Or even the plot is just non-existent at all. But for this game, I do think it does the job well enough. It is very much simple, and one thing for certain, it really does feel like it holds up to this day. The plot summary for this particular review is probably going to be one of the shortest sections I do in this marathon, except maybe the next game that I actually look at. But as far as it goes, it's super simplistic. I do like the plot a lot, but I do think it is too simplistic at times and doesn't really stick to the video game itself. As in a lot of times when you're going around Final Fantasy's world, you're just going around exploring and there's no real plot to be found. It kind of reminds me of a Zelda game a bit, but Zelda games are more fun in that way because you're doing stuff. This, you're not really doing stuff. But the narrative is pretty cool. I mean, four people just show up one day, it's their destiny to go save the world, and they go out and save the world. I mean, I do like that narrative a lot. It's just, I wish that it was a little more involved was all. But no big deal with that. The only problem I have with the plot summary is the fact that Garland is the final boss again. He just shows up as chaos, which I don't understand in Final Fantasy games, two-faced thing. I don't know if you noticed that, but he has two faces. Like, I'm not even going to point out that it's on his crotch because I think it would look weird on his foot or something. But um, why is he the final boss? It doesn't make sense. And it's a lame, lame plot twist. And I really don't like it that much. But anyway... I digress. Let's move on. Well, starting off with the gameplay, when the game boots up, you get to name your characters and pick classes. And no, I don't go over the other ones. I'm just going to go ahead and go over the four that I went through. As I just didn't pick the other classes, so why do I need to go over them? I decided to name my characters Dallin, Terra, Vivi, and Butts. Why? Well, that's the name of the protagonist for Final Fantasy V's Japanese name. And it's funny. Teehee! And I know I have the maturity level of an eight-year-old, but I think it's funny. <laughs> Butts. <laughs> anyway, I picked a pretty basic party. A warrior, a ninja, a white mage, and a black mage. Well, simplistically, the warrior is physically an attacking beast. The ninja is also the same, but a bit swifter and does some crazy damage dealing it only with his hands. Something I think he puts Chuck Norris to shame with. The white mage specializes in white spells that help heal up, and Vivi here does the most damage spell-wise, as he does most of his attacking with elemental spells, which could cause mayhem with the proper level spell you buy. So here's the thing, there is a system in place called the Spell Charges System. No, it's not MP, it's a charge system. You only get 9, which is easier to manage, but if you need more than 9 charges in a tight pinch, then you're pretty much SOL. 
I never ran into this issue, but I could see where others might hate this because they really didn't know about it because they're used to the MP system. Now, picking characters and parties is pretty freaking sick because you have a red mage, a thief, and a couple more as well. And I like the idea of the customization for the teams in this game. However, once you pick that, you are locked into it. It's not a huge deal as I just looked up a traditional setup and I went with it. Now, the way of fighting in this game is traditional as well. You walk around the overworld, an enemy will appear, and you fight it. Now, one thing to note is Final Fantasy is really lacking in the enemy design. Like, really, really lacking in the enemy design. For one, you will notice different names, but you'll see that they're just a different color of a previous encounter that you saw in a different area. I don't see it as a big deal as this is actually an old school RPG, but come on, man, I'm playing the Pixel Remaster. It would have been nice to have different enemy designs, but again, I guess I digress. As again, I don't see this as a huge deal, just a nitpick here. The game may also seem intimidating, but really with a bit of grinding and preparation, this game is kind of a breeze. But this is my biggest issue with the game. This game is what I call a grinder RPG. As in, you beat the dungeon in one area, then you get to the next area and you have to grind again, then you go to the next dungeon after that. Which can be a bit tedious, especially if you play the game for the first time on NES which I did back in 2013. But here's the kicker here with the new changes to the Pixel Remaster. You have an auto battle system, but it is so fast in this version that you can get leveled up so easy in this game. I remember somebody mentioning the Peninsula of Power. There isn't one in this game, but you don't really need it just because of how fast you actually can level up in this game. And then after auto battling a few times to grind, I head to the dungeons, I take on the boss, and bada bing bada boom, you win! Now I will say the dungeons aren't too big. I mean the biggest one in the game is the last one, but it's the last one, so I understand that. But really, all that aside, the dungeons are pretty fun and fulfill my sense of adventure. Now the bosses in this game are good with how well designed they are, they are super easy. I mean, even when I fought certain bosses, even for the crystals, I just set up my party's actions, turned on the auto battle, and then went to town. And then they went down so easily. I mean, the final boss was kind of a challenge, but again, after a second try, because I didn't think to take the weapons off, but I lost big time the first go around, but the second time it was close, but I got him. But as you can see here, my party looks a little bit different than when I started. You can go to this cave and get a class change which gives everybody double what they had before besides those stupid mp charges and then they also look different but one thing to flip and know butts looks like he's ready to go to the disco or something and speaking of sprites and things of that nature i really love the way the pixel remaster looks the water looking like actual water and the environments looking straight fire it's amazing I think the NES looks good, but not even as close to as good as this. The final thing I wanted to talk about, and the best thing about this game, is the music and the sounds. The sounds in this game sound more modern to other Final Fantasy standards, which is awesome, and I really think that shines with how this game sounds, and I love how the spells sound as well. Also, one thing to note, all the spells look freaking dope, especially when you get them higher leveled. But what really shines is the music, and I'm not gonna lie here and say meh, it's alright, because this soundtrack is so good. The Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster has to be one of the best remixes of the Final Fantasy theme I've ever heard. It is so tender and beautiful. I love the way this simplistic song sounds. Nobuo Uematsu created the music and helped supervise this game's soundtrack, and he did an amazing job both times. I think Final Fantasy is a great starting point to an amazing series. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that if you're playing these games on anything but the Pixel Remasters or even, heck, the PlayStation version, then you're going to really have a hard time with it. But I will say one of the problems I do have with the later versions is that there's still flaws from the NES game that do show up in these later titles. And I don't really understand that, but... Hey man, maybe there's only so much you can fix. But I think it's also these flaws that truly keep this game from being a masterpiece. And I don't think we're gonna be seeing a real masterpiece in Final Fantasy until we get to Final Fantasy VI. But until then, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.